Hi everyone, I'm Mike Bellotto from Plastic Oceans Europe, and our guest today is Marijn Tinga. Uh, he's joining us from the Netherlands. Marijn is plastic soup surfer, uh, plastic oceans ambassador, biologist, activist, influencer. Uh, if I've left anything out, I'm sure Marijn will fill me in. How you doing, Marijn? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. From my back garden in the, in the dunes, the Dutch dunes. Uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, nice sunny day there. It is. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we're just off the back of uh, uh, four days of rain and wind here in Barcelona. So I guess that's sort of characteristic for this time of year. But <laughs> So I'm a little bit rugged up. But <laughs> um, Excellent. So first of all, happy Earth Day. This is Earth Day and there's two environmental... Um, passionate activists. Um, it's quite fitting that we're catching up and speaking today. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, you and your vision, uh, the Plastic Avengers app, which you'll be able to expand on a little bit more. Um, and there's something really exciting happening in the Netherlands right now regarding bottle deposit schemes. Would you like to start off with that? Yeah, well, we're on the verge of having a decision on uh, on deposits on small plastic bottles and maybe even cans uh, at the moment. Um, and I've played quite a role in influencing that uh, process. Um, one of the things I did, well, what got the Plastic Soup Surfer started actually, uh, was uh, four years ago, I, I kite surfed from uh, Holland to England on a uh, surfboard made from plastic bottles. So that was 200 kilometers, took me nine hours to get to, uh, the, to the other side. And that, was, that, that record attempt was uh, the start, the kickoff to a petition in which um, I called for plastic deposits on small plastic bottles. And I got 60,000 people to sign my petition. And with that, I went to The Hague. Uh, and not only did I take, that was on Valentine's Day. So instead of 60,000 signatures, I took 60,000 sugar hearts. It was Valentine's Day. And it, <laughs> I gave them to all the, the, uh, the, the, the members of parliament. Um, but I also had something with me, a resolution, which I'd written myself. And it said, we 60,000 people, we want 90% um, less littered plastic bottles within three years. Uh, that was three years ago. And uh, the special thing is all these parliament members signed my petition and it got adopted by parliament straight away. So now I had a... Um, uh, a promise from these parliament, from these, from these parliament, from from parliament, that they well uh, get that result, that ninety percent less. And because, but we all know, of course, that there's only one way to get a ninety percent reduction of littered plastic bottles, and that is through deposits. And in the Netherlands alone, there's already seventy-five million plastic bottles being littered each year. So that's over a hundred thousand each day. Um, and, well, deposits is the instrument to stop that littering. And also, of course, it gives uh, the responsibility is not only that of the consumer or uh, the citizen. It's also, uh, um, uh, it's also part of uh, the companies that sell those bottles, right? We are now spreading that uh, responsibility over consumers and um, companies. So that's what I asked them three years ago. And exactly today... Exactly today, uh, they are actually deciding on, on how this system is going to, um, well, the way we're going to implement this system. And, um, well, like I said, it will be, well, with, with, we're pretty sure we'll have deposit on small plastic bottles. That's, I mean, that's 100% clear, but we might even go, go a step further and have it uh, implemented on cans as well, which was, of course, part of uh, splitting in when, when I, when I presented the resolution, I, I left the cans out to get that leverage. Of course, thinking this is like a slippery slope. Once we have it on small plastic bottles, we'll probably also get it on, on cans. So um, yeah, well, in Friday, we'll probably know uh, what's been decided. Of course, because of Corona, it's not live. Uh, so it's all, uh, it's, it's done in, in a different way. Uh, in Parliament at the moment, so we'll have to wait. But it, well, took a lot of work uh, last, lobbying work, a lot of calling MPs and uh, also companies and 
soda companies the uh, last few uh, days to sort of well try and get uh, try and get people aligned oh that's excellent so the, there might be a bit of a celebration in the mix <laughs> yeah sure yeah for sure for sure friday yeah. we'll know probably awesome and you'll keep us posted i mean we'll be paying attention anyways but you'll keep us posted so we can share the news I will. Yeah, yeah sure i will excellent, Have excellent. A look. there's a, there's actually a documentary on uh, kite surfing from uh, Scheveningen from Holland to uh, to uh, to England. Twelve minutes. You you saw it, right? Yeah, I did, and we have it on our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, that's available. You can find that through our websites yeah. or through any of Moran's channels, which will um, he'll tell you about at the end of this chat. So yeah, yeah, it's an inspirational video. So good on you. It looked like fun, actually. I was a bit jealous. It I was. To get yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, all right, so Plastic Avengers app. This is, I've been looking at the website and uh, I'm not like it. So can you elaborate a little bit more on this? Yeah, so we've we felt there's a lot of apps at the moment that uh, with which you, can, uh, which, which you can monitor or photograph litter you find. And why is this important? Because I feel, first of all, that just, clean, well, there's, of course, there's a lot of, let's start there. There's a lot of awareness about uh, plastic and plastic pollution. And uh, plastic, of course, being very tangible and visible, people really want to do something about it. So what you see, at least in the Netherlands and in other countries as well, is people start picking up litter, doing beach cleans and stuff like that. But they don't realize that just by cleaning up, they're actually uh, empowering the status quo. They're empowering what companies want you to do, which is namely having consumers be fully responsible for that litter when it's actually companies which are putting this out on the market and then saying you know it's consumers that are littering and not looking at their own role in the the whole um uh, uh scope of things um so what we did uh, is we built our own app um and made it as low threshold as possible and also always on a campaign so we are asking people to take photographs uh, within a certain, to collect data, to monitor what they pick up. And with that data, we go straight to companies. So what we did is, for instance, we took 19,000 19, photographs of uh, a certain um, uh, uh, plastic sweet wrapper. We went up to the company. I took a, a bailiff with me so I could get in the door. And uh, we had that company change their plastic wrappers to wax paper wrappers. And that, well, that, that, from that followed that we did the same thing for certain fireworks. We even got 60,000 uh, photographs, people making 60,000 photographs of, of fireworks. We have a very strange uh, Dutch tradition regarding fireworks, so people uh, are allowed to just uh, fire uh, fireworks themselves. But that always, uh, there's a lot of plastics around those fireworks, so we find that and we, well, so, um, so what we found was this is a very effective way to, first of all, gather data, but also to get the community together. And now we're in this corona crisis, of course, and it felt, you know, there's, I mean, plastic is not, um, I mean, uh, um, there's more to life than only plastic littering, of course, or littering of plastics, which we see right now in the corona crisis. So what we did is just to, and, but, but what we did see was all these gloves and mouth masks, these face masks in the street, which is new, which of course has to do with this uh, corona crisis. So we felt like maybe we'll do a study on that. Uh, so we started this uh, corona, uh, corona litter uh, campaign and we want to study how much litter there is. And we're also already finding uh, uh, some results. You know, there's always this conception that littering is done by young people. And, I, that, and that it's their problem and we should have education. But when you look at these, this, this uh, litter we're now finding, it's not young people wearing these masks. So what we're actually seeing is that there's all different ways of, of sources of uh, litter. And most of it has to do with the fact that there's just so much plastic and there's so little ways um, to discard of it properly that it's all embedded in our culture. Uh, and that's what, well, that's what we're seeing right now. So call out to the community, uh, the, uh, the oceans, um, uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, Plastic Solutions com community is uh, download our app and just take a photograph. And so as low threshold as possible, you know, just take a photograph, uh, that's it. And we get it in our, in our database and we use that to study uh, litter. Excellent. Yeah, that's really amazing. One thing that uh, stood out to me, which I guess is uh, a super important message, is um, on your website, it tells people um, that you highly recommend them not picking up the litter because you don't want to play any role in spreading the virus. It's important to just take the photo, keep your distance from it, which, you know, I guess people don't, this virus is so new, people don't realize that it could be just as simple as, you touch that and then touch a doorknob and you've infected someone else. So as much as you want to help and pick up litter, um, the safer thing to do is just pick a, uh, take a photo and pass it on. Exactly. And, and, and when, I mean, this is things you need to think about when you start a campaign, right? You're calling on people to do certain, certain things and uh, it's your responsibility in that case. So that's why we really, highly recommend you not to pick it up because we want no part in, in the spreading of that, uh, that virus. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, regular people off the street as well as other um, nonprofits and charities um, and NGOs, these are the types of people that you want anyone and everyone to register for this app and get involved? Yeah, yeah, just anyone. And the thing is you don't have to register. You just have to download it. It's just like a okay. very easy photographing tool and it, the thing it does is just uh, it uploads it to our database and that's it. Oh, that's Easy. amazing. Yeah, very good. And how do people find this app? Is it on iTunes and the Play Store? And Yeah, yeah. Plus, yeah. well, click the link below. <laughs> 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 how are you going to put that in? Well, yeah, click that yeah link. we'll put a link up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll just put the link. Click that link uh, below and, uh, you know, it's, I, it, it is in uh, App Store and Play Store, of course. Excellent. All right, great. Um, so I guess the last thing that we wanted to touch on was uh, values going or looking ahead, going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, we've sort of already touched on it partly, mm -hmm. thinking about who's responsible for plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. and and also what powers there are. We have companies, of course. We also have societal pressure. Uh, and we have legislation making sure that there's a level playing field for these uh, companies to work in. Mm -hmm. uh, those, are three, those are the three main powers. And to, get, to change anything, you need to play, influence those uh, three powers. And that's what we're trying to do with the plastic soup surfer. Just getting the community involved through an app and then going up to companies or going up to legislators and making them well uh, interact so we can change uh, things. But one of the things I find very interesting about this corona crisis period is that um, when we're talking about uh, uh, corona or COVID-19, we all understand that we have to uh, be restrained in our personal freedom, Constra uh, 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 constrained, constrained, is that the yeah. word? Yeah, constrained, constrained in our yeah. personal, we have to stay at home, even though I'm not, I'm not ill, you're not sick, you know, and still we follow these rules because we feel that by, by, uh, by constraining our freedom, individual freedom at the moment, we are working towards a greater freedom in the future, a, a collective freedom, which is good for us all, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same thing when we're eating, when we think about something like chocolate, it's the same thing. You can eat a lot of chocolate, you're individually free to eat as much chocolate as you want, but you know if you eat too much, you'll get fat, and that will affect your future freedom because it'll be hard for you to walk in the street or whatever. It will, it will, impact, your, it will impact your health. Yeah. That's the frame. We all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. But in, the, the strange thing is, or it's not strange, but the way our society has developed, has been designed, is around disposables and single use. Ever since plastics has been put on the market, 
this super cheap material, which is indestructible, which is usable for everything. We have seen this sort of invade our uh, public space as well. It has made possible that uh, we can buy anything, anytime, anywhere we want. It has made the 24-hour um, eating culture, disposable culture possible. It has catalyzed this throwaway culture. It has made that our individual, our individual freedom in how we think about uh, if we get our first impulses, our first uh, desires satisfied, it's always through this plastic. Yeah. And the industry has made that possible. Plastic has made that possible just by advertising. And it has changed our uh, public space. Our public space is designed around disposable. But on the other hand, of course, we see that by doing this, we are also creating uh, the plastic soup. Plastic pollution, on the other hand, uh, littering when we're talking about uh, Western societies, but if we're talking about developing countries where there's no waste management system, uh, companies know that everything they put out on the market. So, for instance, Unilever puts out 34, uh, 34 billion uh, turnover, which is all packed in plastic in develop developing countries, all going straight into a non-existing uh, waste management system, all pumping that straight into, well, the environment. And they're not taking enough responsibility, if you ask me. And why don't we grasp this idea of freedom opposed to that greater freedom? That is, all has to do with the fact that, well, our society is, that status quo, the fact that the society is designed around um, uh, disposables. So it's very hard for an individual to actually well, do something else. If you want to go zero waste, it's virtually impossible. You have to, you know, take many hours a day just to go shopping. It's impossible. So what we need to do is we need to change that frame. Just like we have a frame regarding COVID uh, and our individual freedom uh, uh, in relation to um, uh, collective freedom in the, in the future or regarding chocolate and your own freedom in the future we need to change the same thing uh talking about disposable uh disposables and this our disposable culture mm -hmm. um, um so we need to make sure that every step we take we do that within that uh, framework of uh our our um yeah this that disposable culture so that means in practice that would mean that if you if you buy a cup of coffee a, a cup a cup of coffee in a disposable cup, you would need to pay extra or better not have them at all. You know, we need to change that, uh, that uh, society, the way society is designed around uh, disposables. Uh, that makes so facilitate reusable uh, options. But most of all, make sure that we get that frame that we feel just as we feel it's not sociable, acceptable to go outside right now and do whatever you'd like to do and, and, and use your individual freedom within this corona uh, uh, period, even though you're not sick yourself. We need to get that same frame regarding disposables that when you walk out the shop, you don't feel well with that uh, single use, whatever you're, you're holding. You don't feel well with that single use cup because that frame in your head says this is not uh, okay because this is linked to plastic pollution. Me doing this is linked to plastic pollution. Just as mm -hmm. me doing going outside within corona times is linked to me spreading the virus, even though you're you're not you don't have that virus. Yeah, but it's that collective moral outlook. Yeah, you're totally right. And that's something that um, you know, within our society, within our throwaway culture that's developed out of uh, lust for comfort and convenience. Um, exactly. That's something that people have no patience for. And that's, that's really the bottom line is that our society has just lost patience. We want everything right now and we want it so that it's easy to carry with us. And we don't want to put in a little bit of effort right now for a long-term gain. Nobody's looking for the future. They're looking at right now. And, you know, that's a problem with people still wanting to go outside and exercise their individual freedoms, not looking at the long-term gain of society as a whole. 
they're just looking at how do I feel right now? And it's the exact same thing when you're supporting the single use throwaway industry. So yeah, that's a, that's a really powerful message for sure. I was just smiling while you were saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to go one step further because I'd like to say it's socially accepted to think that way. That's the, that's the core of the problem. It's socially accepted for you to do, yeah. to exercise that, that freedom uh, in every way that, that, that single youth throw away culture freedom. It's, it's socially accepted and that's what we need to change. And that's why we need a new frame and we need to start building that frame. And hopefully this is one of the first steps uh, next time you take your, uh, you, you decide to buy a disposable coffee, coffee in a disposable cup. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, I think you and I could talk for a very long time, but uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. Uh, if people want to follow you, uh, aside from what we'll put out there, we'll definitely leave access to uh, links and whatnot to, so that you can follow them around. But where would you like to direct people? Uh, for English speaking people, go to Instagram and plasticsoupsurfer.org. And uh, for Dutch speaking people, go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Awesome. Ryan, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your inspiration and all the work that you're doing. You. We'll definitely be following you and uh, stay safe. We'll talk to you very soon. You too. Thank you.